Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Crystal Palace Football Manager Career. Last time you saw, we obviously needed one point from the two games we played. And after the Watford game, I did get an email saying that I've kept my job. But let's see, after that Watford game, how we've been getting on. As you can see, last time we was hit, we saw you, it was a 2-2 draw with Brighton, then a 1-1 draw with Southampton. Then we went to the FA Cup third round. As you can see, it was a 1-1 draw. Watford did, Watford, sorry, Fulham, did get the first goal with knockout. Then, luckily, James McArthur on his last game played well, by the way. But Brewster gets lucky and the keeper hits it out in his face and it goes in. So we get one more draw, taking it to a replay. Then next up, we had, out of the five games, we had the Watford game, which is when I got the email afterwards saying I've kept my job and we did get a 1-0 win here. Tyler Roberts coming back from injury and bagging another goal. Prolo just runs down the wing, plays back to Bellingham, Bellingham back to Prolo, and Roberts just does his casual tapping into the bottom corner as he does all the time. Then next up we had the FA Cup replay, third round replay against Fulham. It was 1-1 in, in the normal time. Bellingham getting another goal, he's been playing very well like I said. Then they scored a great free kick, don't get me wrong, from Kearney. Then it went to the penalty shootout. And as you can see, Mitrovic missed these one. Milovic steps up, he scores. Kearney scores. So it's 1-1. Prolo scores. Hector scores. I was starting to get nervous. Van Arnold steps up and scores. Because obviously we faced Tottenham, we lost on the penalty shootout. Knockout scores as well for Fulham. Validis scores. And then we went through, winning 4 3 on penalties. And then we had a very good result a 0 0 draw against Chelsea away from home. We defended our asses off, we completely defended our asses off. But then the A13 derby, we drew 2 2 away from home. We go to our home pitch and we absolutely dominate. You can see Parolo passing it through to Caledi. He gets, or Eze hitting it back to Caledi. Then he shoots and he gets his first goal of the season against the, just uh, literally just after half time. Then Klein, I don't know what he's doing here, he passes it back and Robert scores another goal. Doing his little roly poly. Then Eze, we won a penalty, Eze slots it home. Not our normal penalty taker. We played a bit of a weaker side here. Then Blesser, Eze, Bellingham, and even Benteke, who's back from Malone, scored. Yep, you saw that right, Benteke scoring. And here we go, here's the fifth and final goal. Townsend crosses it in and Bellingham heads it home. 5 0 against the rivals. Absolutely beautiful. And then we had the FA Cup fourth round against West Brom. Earlier on in the season, we lost to them, obviously. And they get the first goal. Very, very lucky. I don't know to come out for it, but then Townsend. Pass it to Eze. Eze to Caladi, who gets his second goal, two in two. Caladi, absolute on fire this season. And he gets an assist as well by crossing it in and Townsend, or Tompkins, sorry, winning it. We go through with a 2 1 win there. And then we faced West Brom literally like four days after. And we went 1 0 down. And we drew 1 1 in the end. And as you can see, they get another, another set piece. We can see a lot of set pieces, which is unfortunate. But then, luckily, we get another goal. We get a goal back in the 84th minute. Jordan Ayew, first time finish, top corner, beautiful goal, 84th minute. But we should have really won that game. But then we go away from home to Sheffield United. Again, we get another draw, and we absolutely bottled this one. To be totally honest, this was another game we absolutely dominated, and we should have won it. Going one nil up early days. Great goal from Max Meyer. That is, by the way, what a finish that is. Folly, top corner. Then they do score in the 73rd minute, I believe. Yeah, which is sloppy defending, very sloppy. But then we come back and get the 2 1 lead. Is a running down the wing. Pass back to Ryfield. Ryfield crosses it. And we get a header from Bellingham, who I said has been on fire this season. And then 90th minute, they cross it in, set piece, another set piece. We need to cut these out of our game. I've conceded them so much. And then we had the Man United game at home. Now, did not expect anything from this game, really. But again, we defended so, so well to keep a clean sheet against Man United. We got Bellingham, 
Here's the goal to make it 1-0. Max Meyer 2-2. Two two. Another volley. Bottom corner this time, though. The one before him was probably a bit better, but it's still another go nice goal. And then we played friendly against Wickham. We won 2-0. But before we get into Sheffield Wednesday game, I'll show you the si signings and the sales what happened in the January window. We'll start off with this guy. I've signed him and then I've sent him back out on loan. I got him for 12.5 million. He's been performing well like at Olympiacos this season. But he, he's got very good... Like He's only six foot, but he's strong, quick, got good jumping reach, good heading, marking, tackling, positioning is good. All of the stats that you need on a defender is good. And I'm pretty sure he will be easily... He's only 21, the kid. He will be our best defender next season, without a doubt. Markovic is how you say it, I'm pretty sure. And then, like I said, James McArthur has left. He did play his final club, and he got a seven rating. We got... Um, Six point six uh, six hundred and fifty k for him, which ain't bad. It's a shame to see a legend like that go. Like you can see, he's been there for years now. He's a very loyal player at Hamilton for a long time. Then Wigan, and then come to us. But he's just he's thirty three years old. He won't get any game time. Why he still wants to play? He might still send him out. Might bring him back as a coach. Who knows? And then Key and Flanagan we sold to Derry City for a hundred thousand. Never going to get played. 21 years old now. He's not. He's get like getting a bit too old now. Crew on loan to Crew last year. Played all right. Just won't get played for us. So, and if an Irish team are the only ones coming in for him, then we might as well sell him to him. Kiate has been sold as well. We only got 525k for him, but he won't. He didn't play at all this year, did he? No, he didn't play at all this year, and he weren't going to get played. We've just got better defend, like midfielders, sorry. And he, he's still a decent player, 31 years old. But while I can get some cash for him, I might as well, because he, like I said, he was just sitting there just taking up the wage bill. Then, as you can see, there's just all the rest of them are just loans from players. Van der Hyde's gone back out on loan. He come back from Orlando City, played all right. And then I've sent him out on loan to Bristol Rose, who we have affiliate, affiliated with now. He's not turning out as well as I thought he was going to be. He's nowhere near as good as I thought he was going to be. 19 now. Determination is appalling. That's what I think's killing him. Oh, this is another player. We um, signed this player for 350k. Very cheap deal. And then he's gone out on loan to St. Mirren. Uh, deep line playmaker. Probably playing the centre mid. But his um, natural fitness is good. Stamina and that is all right. First touch is good. Passing is very good. Technique is decent. Teamwork, work rate and determination all decent. Only 19 years old. Very cheap deal. Yeah, as you can see, like I said, all the rest of them are just loans who have gone out. And then we've got another loan, what I don't think has actually come up on the thingy, but we signed this player like just in the summer. 18 years old, could be something, 400k, maybe a bit heavy of a bit of money, but determination 16, work rate 13, first touch 17, centre midfielder. He, he's got a lot lot of potential I believe I feel like he could become someone quite easily only 18 like I said Brazilian then this one I I don't know what I was doing here I just I think my, actually I think my director, director of football because we haven't got that many youth players here so 17 year old he was on a free like literally cost nothing but he was playing well I think that's why he's gone off that he's playing well but it was also in the under 18 second division under 19 second division the determination and teamwork and all that are all right for the time being. And um, he could maybe become something, but more than likely he won't be. Then we've got the loanee goalkeeper, Mav Mavogo. Um, I was going to, I could probably sign him on a free for next year, but I'm going to send him, uh, have him on loan because I want to see how good he was. He's probably not going to be good enough. I could probably sign a better keeper next season, but he's all right for the time being to be a, a substitute keeper. And then the, the best one we've got, We'll be playing a right back, to be totally honest. Um, Cordado on loan. Now he has got a big wage budget of 105. Don't get me wrong, and we're playing paying 600k for it. But for someone to be on the on the bench or even starting for the experience of right back instead of Hickey, because Hickey picked up an injury, and I realised I only had two right backs and one of them is on loan. So I've loaned this uh, Cordado in. Determination, that's good. Crossing's good. And he can play on the wing. He can play anywhere down his right side. So, in my opinion, it's a very good signing. But that's all of the sales and the signings. Let's get into the game. All right, here's the starting lineup we're going to go for. We've got Guetta in goal, Prolo at right back, Van Arnholt at left back, Tompkins and Sacco at centre back, Valadis and Kalati. 
in the centre midfield. Bellingham on the right, Zaha on the left, Maja is behind striker and Ayo up top. With Mavogo, Cajado and Dicker, Milovic, Dem uh, Dembele, who has been playing quite well in the reserves teams, uh, Ize and Tyler Roberts all on the bench. I would have never have thought, considering my job was on the line, <laughs> literally 10 games before, that we would go on this mad run with an unbeaten streak. And in the league, I believe it is 10 in a row unbeaten. So can we make it 11 in the league and 13 overall? We'll have to find out. But Moise Keane gets tackled by Tompkins. Caladin to Bellingham. Back to Meyer to Bellingham. He shoots and it's just tipped over by Dawson. Very good football. Very, very quick and good football. But we're going to see the corner. Caladin crosses it in. Bellingham headers it and it's a goal. Seventh goal of the year. This kid is only 17 years old. He's been an absolute monster for me this year. Been a very good signing. He's showing all of the 18.5 million or whatever it was worth of his money. Good in the air. Set, like I said, only 17. He's going to become such a good player in the future. Pump it long. No, he's dropped it. He's dropped the ball, but he does pump it long in the end. Van Arnold wins the header, but Hansen picks it up. Antov over to if Irofo. If I don't have. I ain't got Scooby. But we it seems like we give a foul. Van Arnold gives a foul away this way. He's not been playing this much this year. And they do get a penalty. Is it Moise Keane? No, it's Aliski. And he absolutely batters it into the side netting. Oh. Sheffield Wednesday are the lowest scorers, by the way, in the league. It's a good penalty, don't get me wrong, but it's a silly foul from Van Arnhol. And they only got rivaled on the bench, which is annoying. Caladiga, another set piece. He's been brilliant this year. Bellingham, IU scores eighth goal of the year. Top goal scorer now, without a doubt. Bellingham with the assist after hitting it off the bar. It's very nice. Very good ball from Caladier here. Look at that. Very, very nice ball. Bellingham gets unlucky, but I used to there being a poacher, he is. There's a highlight strike and kickoff, it looks like. They pump it forward, and Moise King gets it. Oh my god, it's 2 2. Literally from kickoff. That is terrible defending from Tompkins. I don't know if this is going to be his last year in a Palace shirt or not. Look at that literally from kickoff, like one long ball over the top. Complacent, that's what it is. Tompkins has to do better there, and Moise King does smash it home. Gieta can't really do anything, it's one on one. Three minutes added on, looks like, yeah, looks like half time. Oh no, we get highlighted literally just before half time. Prolo to Validis, to Maya, to Validis, to Kaladi. Plays over to Zaha, who's back from the African Cup of Nations. Bellingham, Bellingham, eighth goal. He's joint top goal scorer with um, Ayu now. Ayu getting 16 last year and only getting eight so far this year. We've got about 11 games left, 10 games left a game, something like that. But 3 2 now. Literally, probably the last kick of the game. Good cross. Well, not the best cross actually, but Bellingham improvises and does a very good finish. 17 years old. We've been all over him. Don't get complacent. Because look, literally. Calm. You weren't that bad, but I have faith in you. There's a lot to come, and I believe you have to take. There's a lot to come, and I believe what you take. I'm not gonna, not gonna overdo it. Curly to Validis, Validis to Tompkins. Plays over to Van Arnholt now. What's he gonna do? He plays back to Caladie, to Validis, to Meyer, to Caladie. Over to Bellingham. Is he going to get another assist or is he going to get a hat trick? Why would he shoot there? But he has a hat trick! Bellingham hat trick, nine, ninth of the season. He's now the outright top goal scorer with nine goals. Just 48 minutes, literally a couple minutes after half time. Kaladi sprays it over. It's a nice touch. Beats one man. And I don't know why he shot there. Hit the post luckily and then he taps it in. Gets, gets there first, taps it in. Nine goals of the year, 17 years old. In absolutely on flames. Van Arnhol. He doesn't beat the man, but he gets the ball back from a lazy path from Sanson to Meyer to Caladie. He shoots. Oh my god, what a corker. Third goal of the season. Caladie has absolutely smacked that. 5 2 to Crystal Palace. Tell him not to get complacent. They're smashing in the goals now. Look at that. Van Arnhol back to Meyer. Kaladi, first time finish, literally Benjamins, absolute Benjamins. Milovic gets there to Meyer, but McCarthy taking it off Matt Meyer to Aldersky, and he shoots, and oh my god, how's that squeezed in? It's 5 3 now. It's actually 5 3. 
Now it's a bit squeaky bum time a little bit. Maya, look at that silly on the ginger nut. Silly and complacent by the looks of it. Alaski hits it. He should be crossing them really, but oh, Gieta should be doing much, much better there. He should be doing a lot, lot better. Carthy now, a former Palace player, like I said. Moise Keane drives forward and they score. It's 5 4. It's, it is squeaky bum time now. Let's go cautious because the lowest scoring team, we was 5 2 up. 5 2 up and now it's 5 4. They're proper pushing for it. Moise Keane, another good goal. Keane and Alistair are the only two who's actually kept a minute, to be totally honest. And it's Janella. Too close to what I'd like it to be. We got away with that one. We did. I'll tell you what, Bellingham played well. But we should be beating them more, more convincingly than 5 4, especially that we're winning the game. Get straight on to the next game, which is now not an Everton game, unfortunately. It is the next FA Cup round. Round 5 against Burnley. Alright, here we go with the Burnley match now. Let's go into the starting lineup and see who I'm going to start and hopefully beat Burnley so we can go to round 6. Alright, in goal we've got Guetta. Quadrado's going right back. Van Arnhoek's at left back still. Sacco and Ndicca are going to go centre back together today. I don't usually like playing two left footed centre backs, but I just feel like Ndicca needs more game time. Like, yeah, he's, he's even less game time than he did last year, so he probably deserves another game at least. Uh, Milovic and Kaladi are starting centre mid. Bellingham on the right, Zaha on the left. Ize just behind striker and Roberts up top. I'm going to go balance. Then Mivogo on the bench with Hickey, Baladisi, Validis, Blesser, Dembele and Brewster. If we can win, I wouldn't mind, but Kaladi gets a free kick now. Another set piece and all. Oh, straight into both Pope's hands. But the highlight's still going. He pumps it forward. Sanson gets it to the ball first. And they shoot and Guetta has to push it past the post. Like Burnley beat Man United to get to it, so I think they're taking it very serious. That's why I haven't dropped all my starting eleven, but I've tried to switch up the team a little bit. Bring a bit more experienced players, I feel like would be beneficial, but also the attacking players are quite young, just so they get more game time. That's what the FA Cup's here for, is for a bit of experience and game time, really. But Roberts gets past it, it looks like it's a foul. He's looking at VAR and it is a penalty. Who steps up for him? Milovic, of course, he's got like 17 penalties. Please don't miss Milovic. He scores, yes. 1 0 up. Palace 1 0 up against Burnley. 15 minutes in, penalty, Milovic. Milovic, just look at that. Slotting it bottom, bottom right hand corner. Very nice goal. Very nice penalty. Go 1 0 up at half time. I'm happy with your performance. Keep it up. Come on, boys, we got this. Looks like we've got a highlight just just before or just after kickoff. Sorry, Quadrado now. It's back to Sacco. Over the top to Bellingham. Bellingham get, takes it down and passes back to Sacco. To Caladita to Ize. Is Ize going to do? Is he going to drive? No, he switches over to Quadrado. That's where he does so well with the overlap. And Caladi, he shoots and it gets de deflected. Quadrado picks it back up. They head her out. Bellingham to Caladi to Bellingham. Is he going to beat his man? No, he passes back to Quadrado. He passes back to Milovic. Over to Caladi, switch it over to Van Arnold. Is this is a crossing opportunity. It is. Bellingham picks it up. Look, we're just keeping on the ball so nicely of Quadrado. Cross it in, Tyler Roberts, and then he, oh, he hits the post. That is unlucky. That was good football from us there. Just keeping on the ball, not doing anything silly, not giving it away. And they get a, a set piece now, and oh my god, they've hit the post as well, I believe. Pretty sure the draw is in two days, so I'll show you that as well. And we get a nice 1 0 win, but that. Injury for Bellingham is not what I like to see. Well done, lads. Good win. Just got this email as well. Bellingham season is over. Six to seven months. He's probably going to be injured for the start of next season as well. It's been brilliant this year. Absolutely brilliant. But six to seven months, he's injured now. Here we are for the draw. So who's in it? We've got Bristol City, Chelsea, us, Leicester, Man City, Newcastle, Norwich and Swansea. I would like Swansea out of them all. And they're out first. Is it going to be us? It's not. It's Newcastle. Now I'll take Bristol City. But Leicester versus us. It's not the worst result. Man City, Bristol, Chelsea, Norwich. So we will have Leicester City away from home though, which is the problem in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. But 
Let's see, where, where shall we come back for? I'll do Leicester Arsenal next. Did we play Arsenal already? Like, did we show you? I can't remember if we showed you or not. No, it was the City in Bournemouth, wasn't it? Well, um, yeah, we'll come do less the quarterfinal and Arsenal next game. Thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. It would be much appreciated. We're on the road to 100 subscribers. I'll see you all later.